the Smith & Wesson Airlite 22 Magnum. Let's check it out. The Smith & Wesson 351PD is in their Airlite series. Uh, it is a super lightweight revolver. Uh, this one is in 22 Magnum and it's very low recoil, very easy to slip into your pocket. And guys, I'll tell you, Smith & Wesson quality on this revolver is just over the top. But the big thing about this handgun is, is it is, it is super lightweight. One of my Patreon members, Thad, brought this down to me. Once I held it in my hand, I said, "Guy, we gotta do a review on this one. The Smith & Wesson Airlite 351 PD. Uh, this is in 22 Magnum. Uh, it is a super light firearm. I'm talking about 11 ounces. I mean, it is a featherweight. And uh, really great for going on a hike, going camping, slipping it into your pocket. I mean, it's just a really, uh, excellent quality firearm. I mean, Smith & Wesson does a great job. The finish on this is exceptional, which is typical. Uh, guys, really, as far as a basic revolver, Smith & Wesson is hard to beat. And uh, one of the great things about Smith is they've been around for a long time, but they definitely have a lot of innovation in these new designs. Now, this is a 1.875 inch barrel, so it is a fairly short barrel. It is stainless steel in the barrel, but the barrel shroud, the frame, the cylinder are all aluminum alloy. And of course you have your standard steel parts all through it, but this thing is made to be super lightweight. Let's check to make sure the gun is unloaded. Uh, you'll even notice that the ejector rod and the ejectors are stainless steel. Very nice look. It is a seven shot revolver. It's really smooth, nice lock up, pretty tight fit. Uh, and a, kind of a matte finish. And then you have these beautiful rosewood grips, which they look slick, but honestly, you have a really good feel to them. I mean, they seem to mold right to your hand. Uh, no texturing or anything, but you really don't need it with the 22 Magnum. The recoil is very light. And to me, this would make an excellent gun for somebody that was kind of stuck on 22, especially some females. They really are adverse to going with some of the larger calibers and at least step them up to 22 Magnum. Compared to 22 long rifle, it is a little more expensive, but it's not that expensive. And here is the round. I mean, it's long and tall, about 1,900 feet per second with a 22 projectile. Uh, the velocity and the ballistics actually match the 9 millimeter, but uh, you just don't have the mass of the 9. This is not really considered an adequate self-defense round, but there are a lot of people that do carry them. And so this is definitely better than a sharp stick, but honestly, I think there's some merit to it. And as you can see, the 22 long rifle is definitely considerably shorter. Uh, you don't need to fire your 22 long rifle in here, but they do make a 22 long rifle version. And let's check the true weight. 11.2 ounces. This thing is light. Now these are based on the J-Frame, which has been around for a number of years. The Model 36 has been very popular. And all of the small little snubbies, most of those are on the J-Frame, which is their smallest frame. The overall length is 6.2 inches. And you can see, you know, the cylinder is a little bit thick here, but really this easily slips into a pocket. And again, you don't have to worry about the safety factor. I mean, the safety factor is built into that really heavy trigger. And now it does have a transfer bar and you can see it moving up and then when you pull the trigger it releases and lets it come down. It is a floating firing pin and that keeps it safe in case you drop it on the hammer. It's not going to fire the handgun. Now here is your cylinder release right here. Just push it forward, bring it out, spins really freely. And of course to load, 
you just put one in at a time all the way to seven then when you want to unload just bring it out and they come right out just has a smooth trigger and uh, we'll check out the trigger pull in just a minute but this is a double single action revolver so that means that if I pull the trigger with the hammer down, it will bring it back. Now I'm not going to dry fire this a lot because it's not really good to dry fire rimfire handguns typically. Uh, and then if you want to take just a regular shot, an aim shot, you can pull your hammer back. And then it's a much crisp break, much more crisp break than your double action. Double action is pretty heavy. We'll check the trigger pull weight in just a minute. It does have a fiber optic high vis sight on the front and then here at the back we just have a U notch but it lines up very well. And this really makes it fast to be able to pull out and you're just barely looking over the top of the revolver. The crane comes out, we have a little bit of a detent right here that holds it right into place and it just snaps in so it gives it a good solid lock up. You can see the stainless part of the barrel sticking out here. Now we have a trigger lock right here, there's a little key and you can just lock that down and it just disables the firearm. A lot of people don't like that. In fact, I believe there are a number of kits where you can actually replace that with a small little pin and deactivate that trigger lock. But that's just one of the things that Smith & Wesson has added and probably because of a bunch of lawyers, to be honest with you. But, you know, a double action revolver is really safe, safe to carry because you have that initial really long trigger pull and that is your safety. So there doesn't really have to be any external safeties on this firearm. Now, when it is in the rear position, uh, you don't want to keep it that way because this trigger pull is really light. We have our Lyman trigger gauge from Brownells. We're going to check the double action trigger pull first. It's pretty hefty. Yeah, 11 pounds, 14.8 ounces. 11 pounds, 15.6 ounces. That is heavy. When it comes to single action, 2 pounds, 8.5 ounces. <laughs> really light. What a contrast. Yeah, one pound, 15 ounces. It's light. And we want to thank Federal for sending some 22 Magnum for this review. Uh, I love shooting 22 Magnum. It gives you a little more umph than your regular 22 long rifle. And yet, still, low recoil. Now being so lightweight, I did expect it to have a little bit of recoil with the 22 Magnum, and it did. Uh, it was a little bit, just a little bit more than your regular 22 long rifle. But that just means you've got more power coming out the end of the barrel, which, you know, in a self-defense or even for snakes and things like that on the trail, uh, you really would like to have a little bit more of that ump to it. <laughs> and it definitely has it. But it's very manageable. Uh, the trigger pull for the double action, actually when you're shooting it, doesn't feel like it's over 11 and a half pounds. I mean, it was more, it just felt less. Uh, the single action was really nice and we were able to get a decent group out of seven rounds. Now I had one flyer right there at the end. But honestly, you can put them right there together, just a little bit to the right, but not a bad group at all. It's just a lot of fun to take down to the range, and yet you have a little extra power than your standard 22 long rifle. And of course, we didn't have any type of malfunctions. The gun just functioned right. It's smooth, the action's smooth, uh, and it's just got a beautiful look to it. And those fiber optic sights definitely stand out, and they fit right down in that notch. So it's that low profile sight, and yet you've got a lot of visibility with that high vis sight.
locked. When it comes to the grips, if you want to change them out, there is a ton of different options. One of the things about the grip is it's made to be small, and so your pinky's going to hang off the end. But again, the recoil is so light, it's not really a problem. But you can actually get a little bit of an extended grip, whether it's Hogue, Packmeyer, or VZ grips, or whatever. There's a ton of different options out there. But I think these are absolutely beautiful. Now one thing about a revolver is making sure you keep it clean. Uh, one thing about it is, is it seems kind of simple, but because you really have to get into each of these cylinders and you want to do that shooting out the 22 because it's going to have a lot of powder burn at the end, keeping those clean, getting under the ejectors here and keeping that clean right up here at the top of your uh, back strap right here or top strap and then around your barrel and of course your barrel and then keeping this area clean, making sure you don't get oil down into the firing pin area. The Smith & Wesson logo nicely engraved on the side, and then here on this side, Airlite PD. What does PD stand for? I don't know. <laughs> and we have Smith & Wesson engraved right here on this really short barrel. Now one of the things about the short barrel is that you're going to lose a lot of velocity or the advantage of 22 Magnum with a barrel like this. You're going to get more powder, uh, you know, but and you're going to get some increase in energy but it's definitely going to be hurt somewhat by the little short barrel. So if you're really considering this for self-defense, guys, you know, you need to be really careful. Do your research. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about 22 Magnum as a self-defense load. There's many that say there's no way. There's others that say it's a decent self-defense round. And so maybe that'll be something we might do coming up to test out 22 Magnum. The most important thing, guys, if you're carrying something for self-defense, you need to be sure that it is able to get the job done. Now, centerfire cartridges are just more reliable than rimfire. Uh, so you want to really use good, high-quality 22 Magnum ammunition. Now, guys, these are not cheap. Uh, the MSRP is $766. Uh, the price, typically market price, I've seen around $679, but you might be able to find it lower just according to where you find it. Uh, but, you know, Smith & Wesson quality and revolvers are more expensive to manufacture, especially than your striker fire semi-automatic pistols so that's definitely going to be a factor and again i want to thank thad for bringing out the little 351 pd this has been a lot of fun and guys low recoil super lightweight yet pretty effective in 22 magnum and guys if you want to keep gun content on youtube please consider supporting us on patreon i'll have a link down below in the description it really helps keep us on youtube be strong be of good courage god bless america long live the republic While these are not cheap, uh, this is really a okay. where are these still okay. blah 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 blah. It is a super light revolver. Okay. Multi purpose driving range, shooting range. Shooting, I'm shooting a little bit to the, to the right. He'd been dead though. Yeah, he yeah. he'd have been hurt. <laughs> wouldn't have stayed around. <laughs> it's 22 Magnum, baby.